like in the United States? Because we're getting data out of the U.S. We had some yesterday, ISM numbers looking pretty good, uh, up about to 57 points. And of course, we know 50 is the break even there. We had some other data coming out looking pretty mixed at this stage. What do you see on the main street in the U.S. at this stage? It's, as you say, mixed, but the picture in the U.S., to my mind, um, it remains extremely subdued. Um, there's, there's very little uh, strength in the real economy. Um, the plight of the uh, uh, sort of middle America, if you want to call it, uh, has not uh, changed. The, um, the um, prospects for employment remain pretty bleak, in fact, and I think there's an increasing amount of discouraged people in the total workforce. There's no signs of uh, uh, companies uh, hiring uh, or intending to hire anytime soon, and there's, a f uh, there's still a fair amount of slack. Um, and of course, there's a, a, a good deal of excess yet to work out of the uh, system. The fiscal position is extremely worrying, and uh, there was quite a, a landmark act passed. It was a compromise bill, if you wish, uh, on the tax front, uh, which in fact increases the uh, red ink further. That's a temporary move, I guess, some respite uh, for uh, spending and for incomes. Uh, but it doesn't resolve the long-term fiscal problems of the U.S. And for that, they need the employment market to, uh, to really start uh, moving. Nominal sales uh, on the high street, if you will, in the, um, are, 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 are back to previous best levels. Um, but you've got to slice and dice that. There's also increasing risk of default on people's homes. Um, and although interest rates are at you know, record uh, low levels, uh, for many people with uh, mortgages, uh, interest rates, if anything, have gone up. I indeed, if they're in fact able to get a mortgage. Uh, jumbo mortgages are going at over 5%. So I, I, I think if you take that into account, uh, the fact that the US is also still running a very uh, large um, um, trade sort of deficit, um, there aren't very many uh, sort of encouraging uh, pointers. And, and I think the US on the whole, though, is becoming significantly less relevant to the prospects for the world economy going forward. And I think the markets will take that on board as we go through 2011 and beyond that. Well, just looking at the performance over 2010, we had the JSC up by about 16%, the DAO up by 11%. So after a bit of a, a jittery mid-year for the markets, we picked up particularly in December, a very good December. Do you think that the gains we have seen on global markets and on the JSC are warranted given the global economic picture at this stage? Well, take those gains that you saw in the U.S. I mean, that certainly is uh, bolstering uh, some people's net worth, and, and I, I guess it gives a d degree of uh, optimism. Uh, but one has to look at that uh, in the context of the fact that uh, you know, yield is all but absent elsewhere. And, and so we have seen quite a flow of funds into markets, which I think has probably buoyed them uh, beyond what they otherwise would be. Of course, the, the, the real clincher comes if interest rates start to move up. But there's no indication of that anytime soon. So I think, you know, asset price inflation has certainly come about. And let's not forget that within the Dow components, a significant number of those companies are trading outside of the United States. And foreign income, therefore, becomes a very important part of their uh, lives. Uh, so although the, uh, the heartland, if you will, remains relatively weak, uh, companies have not been tardy in running themselves lean and mean, and overseas markets have treated them well. And I think certainly, and it's a theme we may want to actually touch on further, commodities have been quite a stimulus uh, through 2010. And I think that's going to be a, a theme uh, increasingly also through 2011. Despite a very weak U.S. economy, commodity prices have been very strong. The oil price is a very good indication of that. So the world on the whole is getting richer. The poorer are getting richer. The world is developing. And the focus, therefore, is much less on 
the um, the rich uh, world, if you will, Northwestern Europe, US particularly. Perhaps Sam, turning to China, we had some PMI numbers out of China and they were the ones that did disappoint so while well, Europe and the US came in quite strong. China over the weekend released a, a PMI that showed a, a bit of a deterioration there. Is that of concern to you just given the, the commodity outlook you have at the moment? Uh, I take some of these numbers out of China with a pinch of salt. I often wonder whether you know you can often take them at safe at, at face value. You can take Facebook at face value, I guess, but some of these uh, stats. Can you even take Facebook <laughs> at face value? <laughs> I wonder actually. I'm not part of the 500 million, incidentally. Um, I'm worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I, I, I think China. You know, I, I tend to look at the bigger picture there. It, it's very difficult to get a truly accurate picture on the stats that uh, come out. And looking perhaps at the mid and small cap sector, how, how did that fare in 2010? What do you expect from them in 2011? Because many were saying they would be playing catch up with some of the larger cap stocks and that's perhaps where you should be looking for investment opportunities. Yeah, if memory serves, the all share was up about 16% for the year, uh, the uh, mid caps are up about 27 and we have the smaller caps up by 22. Of course, the smaller caps were severely hammered uh, post-2008 and also the mid caps. There was a bit of a flight to safety, if you will. So you do tend to find the larger caps uh, getting uh, a bit more favor. And I think that certainly started to shift in 2010 as confidence built. And, and we saw some reasonable earnings numbers coming out from a range of various um, uh, companies, or at least we got the sense that things weren't getting any worse. Um, so certainly I think at the top end of the market we have started to get quite stretched in fact. Uh, the market pricing in a deal of recovery. Um, and so there are still uh, a few gems out there in the uh, smaller mid-cap uh, arena. And I think if one is fishing around that's probably the place to be uh, this uh, year. Um, I think, uh, for my mind, um, you know, earnings are going to have to come through increasingly to justify some of the ratings that we have on a range of stocks. Tell us about some of those gems, perhaps, in the mid and small cap sectors. What would you be looking at in well, particular sectors? You know, take a company like Barlow's, which really came strongly through in the latter part of uh, 2010, and 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 that you know really gave us a good indication. It's, it was a, a very a strong favorite of mine that last year and it remains a favorite of mine for this year. You take a, a, a really small cap like Argent for instance on the industrial side, uh, that gives us a pretty good uh, look into what's happening in the steel merchanting uh, side of things um, and various other aspects of the real economy and, and we'll see you know them showing a, a tremendous improvement in, in, in earnings this year off uh, a pretty low level, if you will. Let's take a, a company like New World, which, you know, it, it's not particularly well traded, uh, but it's in the consumer space. There's a very good example of a company uh, in which management really did the right things, and, and they've come through an exceedingly difficult two and a half years, uh, probably in better shape than they've ever been. So, uh, again, uh, companies probably using this very difficult period to uh, resize um, and come through stronger than they otherwise uh, would. Uh, on the healthcare side too, I'm still fairly optimistic there that uh, we'll see some, you know, uh, good, not stellar growth uh, as we go through this the, this year. And if if you're looking at uh, relative safety. Uh, you know, companies like Netcare Life uh, offer very good value. Uh, I think Aspen too, one has to watch, although it's very stretched, uh, very minimal yield, uh, 18 times PE. Uh, it's a company probably in the second phase of its, uh, of its growth cycle. And if the first phase is anything to go by as it uh, increases its presence globally, um, there could be some fairly exciting numbers coming out of that company.